Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. Before we get started, let's get today's shout out out of the way. Today's shout out is a twofer again, and it goes to James Knuthia and Lucas Lichwa. I hope I pronounced that correct. <laughs> both were first to say first in one of my recent videos, and both of them win a shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a nice new review of a nice new attache carrying case. Isn't this cool? <laughs> No, this comes with the drone, folks. This is the uh, flat or Fun Sky 913. Let's pop it open and take a look and see what's, what you get inside this uh, carrying case. Um, you get the drone you know, and get an instruction manual. Let me take these out one at a time to show you. Let's go over the drone first off. Uh, this is the drone. It is a brushless motor drone, folks. Um, it comes with uh, 1306 2700 kV motors, brushless uh, motors. So, um, you know, this is a low cost, a relatively low cost GPS drone. This also has GPS. Uh, it enables you to return to home on command, on loss of signal, or on low voltage. Now, uh, it additionally has a 1080p camera on the front of it here. Um, this camera can be swiveled up and down manually to adjust the look, look down angle if you wish. Um, but it also records to a micro SD card which is the slot is right in the back here so you don't get any of the um, Wi-Fi frame dropping that you normally would see if this recorded strictly through uh, Wi-Fi now with that in mind this is a Wi-Fi FPV flyer it uses 5 gigahertz of FPV or Wi-Fi which means your phone should be 802.11 AC Wi-Fi capable make sure your phone is 802.11 AC Wi-Fi capable before purchasing or you will be sorely disappointed when you won't be able to connect your phone to this drone. So I strongly recommend you do that. And I apologize for my voice today, folks. I'm getting over the flu I recently had. <laughs> I'm still working with it. Um, but you also get a battery. The battery for this drone is a 3 or 2S battery. Uh, let me, yeah, let me get this. It's a 7.7 .7 volt, which means it is a LIHV battery, high voltage uh, lithium battery. Uh, 1500 milliamp per hour. Now this is supposed to give this drone approximately 15 minutes of flight time. That would be hovering only. I don't fly hover only, so expect to see a lot less than 15 minutes when we go fly this today out in the field. Um, additionally, this comes with a controller. It's actually a nice controller. Well labeled. This is for taking photos. This is for taking videos. One thing about this controller, it does not have a, you don't use your own batteries. This has a built-in battery. It's a little 3.7, uh, 300 milliamp per hour battery, so it's not a big battery. But it should give you enough for at least a couple flights. <laughs> I'm open, <laughs> two or three flights. But let's go over the buttons on it. This is the on-off switch here. This is your function button, and I'll, I'll go over the functions here shortly. Um, this button here is for automatic takeoff. This button here is for command, return to home and landing. You press that, and the, the drone will fly back and land. Uh, this button here is for sport mode. If you want to, it'll sport mode is uh, flying um, with the GPS still on, but it'll go faster. Uh, this, the base speed of this is three meters per second, I believe. And when you press sport mode, it's supposed to be boost up the angle, the tilt angle, so you can go five meters per second. So. You know, if you want to fly fast in GPS, you can do such. Um, you can switch off GPS by pressing this button here, and you can fly it manually with altitude hold mode. Um, if you have any problems with the GPS, like you notice uh, it becoming unstable or doing toilet bowl effect, circling, you know, press it, this button here to turn off the GPS to turn off that problem so you'd be able to bring the drone home and land it. One other thing to do a compass calibration, you press this you turn on the drone, I connect the controller to the drone, and then you press this button here until the, this function button, until the uh, white light flashes, and then you press the GPS button, and the drone should enter into compass calibration mode at that point, and I'll go over the compass calibration out in the field, but this is how you activate it, folks, by using this function button with a GPS button. Now, pressing and holding the function button again, um, Another calibration you need to do with this drone, and I strongly recommend you do this before your first flight because I didn't, and mine flipped over on me. <laughs> and that is to do a compass or a calibration of its gyros. And the way to do that is to uh, turn on the drone, connect it to the controller, press the function button, 
And leaving the drone on undisturbed on a flat level surface, press the sport button while that light's flashing, and the drone will enter into uh, gyro calibration. And that gyro calibration takes about 30 seconds, folks. Give it time, you'll hear it beep beeping, and wait until the light's steady on the drone. So I strongly recommend doing both a compass calibration before your, your first flight and a gyro calibration. Now, one other problem that I had with this out of the box, and I again, I strongly recommend you doing, <laughs> is checking what mode you're in. This came in mode one. Okay, that meant the throttle was on the, the right side. I did not know that. So when I first did takeoff, I did an automatic takeoff by pressing this button here. The drone took off, and then I tried to give it throttle, and then all of a sudden I noticed that this drone was flying in off in a weird direction. So I, you know, that shocked me. I was in mode one. So uh, when you first get this, uh, I strongly recommend doing a manual takeoff. The way to do that is to bring both sticks down and inboard, and the drone's motors will start. And then whatever stick you think the throttle was on, try giving it just a little bit of throttle to take off. If it, um, if it does not take off, you're probably in the wrong mode, and you'll need to switch. And to switch modes on this, between mode 1 and mode 2, is to... to um, Hold down the function button again, and then move both sticks up and down simultaneously. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to change modes. I got it in mode 2. I'm happy. Throttle's on the left side now. But the switch between throttle left or right is, again, press that function, wait until that light flashes, both sticks up and down, and that will switch the controller between mode 1 and mode 2. Okay, that's about it, folks. Um, I forgot to mention, this uses... The Hellaway app available on Google Play and iTunes. And through that app, um, you, it doesn't do much with the app other than the app is providing FPV video to you and telemetry. But it also does allow you to do gesture control. So if you want to take photos and videos using your hand, you know, <laughs> I think that's a gimmick. But it ha supposedly has that capability through the app. Okay. Let's go fly this 1080p HD camera drone out in the field and see how it flies. So hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and we're going to do a nice flight of the Fun Sky 913 today. Um, first off, I want to show you how to get it started, uh, particularly how to calibrate its gyros. But anyways, here's the battery has been inserted. Uh, to turn on the drone, you press and hold the on-off button like so for about three seconds until the you hear the ESCs kick in, and put the drone on a flat level surface, and then bind it to the controller by turning on the controller and moving the stick up and down. And it should be bound to the controller. Now, before we fly, we need to do a gyro calibration. And to do that gyro calibration, you know, let me put this down here so you can see the white light. But we're going to hit this function button until it flashes. And hold it until it flashes. Then we hit the GPS button. And right now, this drone's... It's, it's hard to see it in the sunlight. But uh, the drone's red light is on and the blue light in the back is off now we got to do uh, three rotations two to three rotations until the lights switch from r the red light in the front switches to the blue light in the back okay now I got a blue light in the back let me see if you can see that folks <laughs> but now we're going to do three rotations until all lights are solid and the front light the red light in the front is dark right now and now it just came on so let me double check that. So now we got blue lights in front and back. Let me confirm that. We do. So we have gyro calibration completed. Okay, I am going to connect the drone to the app now and then we'll go flying. So hold on, folks. Okay, this is the Hellaway app available on Google Play and iTunes. And before we take off, I'm going to start up, or actually, I got to turn off this function button. It's still blinking from that gyro calibration we did. Okay, we should be good to go. We should be set. It should be in GPS mode for takeoff. I'm going to start the video camera by using its video camera button on the controller. Let's see if that shows us recording. And we are recording as per the screen. Now, remember I told you the first time you fly this, I recommend doing a manual takeoff because you don't know if it's going to be motor, mode 1 or mode 2. So I'll show you how to do that. Both sticks down and inboard until the motors start. And then push up on the stick that you think is the throttle until it takes to the air and there we go now let's check its stability seems to be relatively stable let's go up a bit higher its barometer altitude <laughs> wants to be set right about there and I'm 
from getting into the camera and saying, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> and, okay. So right now I'm getting a warning, compass abnormal, please keep away from the interference source or recalibrate the compass. Well, I'm not seeing any issues. And I did that compass calibration. It's not toilet blowing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume we're fine. And I'm going to go hot bond. Heading hot bond. What I want to do is see if I can make, this supposedly has 300 meter range. And I would like to see if we it will make it to the skate park off in the distance there, which is about 300 meters away. Okay, right now we're 58 meters. I'm trying to keep an eye on it here. It's going behind the trees. <laughs> Let me see if I can see it again. There we go. And yeah, we're 100 meters out. Still heading to the skate park. 118 meters out. It's a little thing in the sky. This one's going to be hard to see once we get to 300 meters, so I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way there. 150 meters. And stopping right there. Okay. From that point there, I want to see if I can do a return to home, because I'm getting hard to see it, and uh, I don't want it to... Press the return to home button and see what it does. It's climbing. Climbing, I'm assuming it's going to go up to about 30 meters. Most of them do. And I lost FPV. But I can see it coming back. So the FPV range seemed to be about 150 meters, 157 meters. Before I lost FPV video, I was still having control of it. I think I could control it probably at the 300 meters. So now your FPV uh, performance is going to vary from phone to phone. Mine, my phone doesn't have the best antenna in it <laughs> for reception of uh, the 5G Wi-Fi. So my phone, I found that my phone generally gets less range than most people, uh, most other people that use 5G Wi-Fi that I've seen on RC groups. So that may not, you know, 157 meters may not be the max uh, range for FPV. It's probably, it could be further for some phones and maybe shorter for some other phones. So it, it varies from phone to phone. Okay, it's overhead. Let's see if it will come down. And descend. We're just checking out the GPS portion of this drone. See how close to my backpack and landing pad is it going to land. Eh, not too bad. About a meter. Not bad at all. Okay, let's stop that video and put the aircraft back on its landing pad again. This time we'll do an automatic takeoff. First start the video camera, or no, I'm not going to start the video camera because what I want to do, folks, okay, this to do an automatic takeoff, you still need to start the motors by bringing down and inboard like so, and then you press that takeoff button. Now this is automatic takeoff. Yeah, let's check its stability there. Drift it back a little, but it's fine now. Okay, going up a bit and getting in the picture. And I am not in the picture. Am I pointing it the wrong way? Yeah, <laughs> I was pointing it the wrong way. Okay, what I want to do now is take a photo and take another photo and take one more photo. So three photos. And compass abnormal. What I'm going to do, folks, is do one more compass calibration just to make it happy. So hold on, folks. I'm going to land it and do that compass calibration. We're going to skip seeing it, do, me do it again, but I'm just going to do it, and we'll take off again. Hold on, folks. Okay, I redid the compass calibration. Let's take the air one more time. And both sticks down and in. Starting the video camera one more time. And automatic takeoff. Checking its position, position hold, it's drifting a little bit, hello there, okay, now let's fly it around the field here, I'm still getting this compass calibration issue, I don't know what that is, but 
again I've calibrated several times it might be a, a problem with the app because the drone seems to be flying fine but what I want to see is how is it as a small vacation style drone to take some video video and photos with it seems to be operating very nicely nice and smooth at this speed this is again this beginner GPS rate and it's kind of docile <laughs> at this rate we're gonna switch to sport mode here shortly after we go up I want to just go up above the the height of the uh, local poles here on the on the uh, field I don't want to smack into the poles but just go above them Am I above them? Nope, gotta go higher. Higher, 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 higher. Now I'm above them. And we'll just go out up and over. So, yeah, this is a nice little drone, actually. And I think it's only like $138 or something like that. Not bad for a drone with this capability. Now, this doesn't have those uh, fancy things like follow me or circle me. It doesn't come with this drone, at least not with its app. And again, um, those features tend to be gimmicky. They're really, it's not a good idea to have a follow me drone without a gimbal, or, you know, a stabilized image stabil or video stabilization. It just looks real bad if you do follow me with, <laughs> without a gimbal. <laughs> okay, um, let's try this sport mode. This is still GPS, but with higher speed. Okay, in sport mode, let's try it. See what it can do. Oh, it can move. It can move real well in sport mode. Surprisingly well. You'd think it was in attitude hold mode. Very fast though. Let's go out and about the pole. Bringing it back. Yaw to the right, yaw to the left. But again, when you're flying sport mode, the video's gonna look pretty bad. <laughs> so coming out of sport mode now. Reducing throttle, coming back down. Not bad at all. Not a bad little drone at all. Reasonably priced. Nice, you know, brushless motors like people have been asking for. And it, it flies relatively well. <laughs> so, <laughs> just showing it to you. Okay, let's try going from GP, turning GPS off and flying in altitude old mode. GPS coming off now. Now we got some drift. And that drift is probably caused by, uh, I could use a IMU calibration, inertial measurement unit, <laughs> in other words, the gyros. But in altitude hold mode, this thing moves even faster. Holy moly, this thing moves. It's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> Very fast little flyer. Am I recording? I am recording, so. Okay, let's see if we can go back to GPS mode. GPS back on. Is it holding its position? Yeah. Not bad little drone at all. Okay, battery power is getting low. Um, it says when it gets down below 30% or something, or 20%, I believe, it has a uh, geofence that'll kick in. Let's see if that actually is true. And by the way, it does have a geofence in its menus that you have to turn off for beginner. It, it starts in beginner's mode. And yeah, right now it won't let me go flying further than, I'm far away, 30 meters. So there's a 30 meter geofence and also there's a, a 30 meter altitude geofence on low battery. Eventually this is going to ignore my uh, inputs on the controller and land itself so I'm going to fly it until it does land itself I want to see it auto land but it's doing a nice little job nice little drone I forgot the name of this because I want to yeah fun sky 913 so okay we're gonna fly continue flying come down a little lower I'm just gonna do selfie flight selfie portion right now so um, what else can we do I think we demonstrated most of the things I haven't demonstrated let's see if I can get that uh, what do you call this thing gesture control gesture photography see if it actually works 
usually these don't work very well and it doesn't seem to disappoint me because I don't think it's taking a photo or I am recording video maybe that's a problem let me stop the video for a second let's try it again now I get closer low battery the aircraft is forced to land start recording again let's see I, I want to see it okay and low battery Find a low battery, it just lands itself. Okay, keep that in mind, folks. Um, it does not do a return to home. On low battery, initial low battery, it'll tell you to stay within 30 meters. It'll force you to stay within 30 meters. And then final low battery, it'll land wherever it's at. So let's stop that video. So that is the flight of this little fun sky 913. Not a bad little drone. I kind of like it. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101. Let me get my face in the picture. Quadcopter 101. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.